The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that we breastfeed till six months if possible. Most families are introducing solid foods to babies, for example, cereals and vegetables, at about six months. This is a kind of an interesting thing to discuss with families because um, grandmothers came up at a time when uh, solid foods were introduced very early to babies, uh, one month or two months of age. But nowadays, we try to uh, discourage solid food introduction until they're six months of age. We think that uh, their gastrointestinal tract uh, matures um, a little bit better and the babies handle solid foods better at six months of age. We think that they're less likely to have food allergies uh, if we delay the introduction of solid foods till six months of age. And um, we, we know that the babies get plenty of vitamins, minerals, and calories from the breast milk or the formula alone until six months of age. Once they're six months of age, we introduce cereals that are iron fortified, uh, fruits, vegetables. Um, they can have water. We like to limit fruit juice uh, to probably four ounces a day because, um, believe it or not, fruit juice is not that nutritious. Um, it gives fluid and it gives a lot of sugar and perhaps a little bit of vitamin C. We really want to discourage that. It's probably bad for their teeth and they just don't need uh, a lot of those empty calories. Until six months of age, uh, the water requirement is met by simply breast milk or formula. They get plenty of water that way. Um, but, uh, you know, after they're six months of age, it's okay to have, you know, an ounce or two of water here and there. Oh, babies are very smart. They eat when they're hungry and they fall asleep once they're full. So when they're infants, of course, when they're full, they will stop eating and fall asleep. When they're a little bit older, they'll just get bored and disinterested and stop and start doing something else. You know, the recommendations are every couple hours, but some babies will want to eat more often, some will want to eat less often. The nice thing about breastfeeding is uh, when the baby's done eating, you know, it's very difficult to um, continue the feeding. Sometimes when a baby is bottle fed, there's a tendency to finish the bottle. So if the baby's really full and uh, wants to stop, sometimes the parents will kind of jiggle the, the bottle around in their mouth to get them to finish the bottle when in fact the baby feel full, feels full and they're done already. You, you really don't want to overfeed your baby. You want to give them enough to eat, enough nutrition, but if you get in the habit of overfeeding the baby, does that in turn lead to overfeeding your toddler, your child, uh, setting up food as a reward? Unfortunately, in our country, we have a serious problem uh, with childhood obesity. And so, you know, we really want to get away from overfeeding them. We want to feed them uh, proper nutrition, and we want to make sure that kids get lots of exercise. It's very, very important. If they can eat healthy as youngsters and get in the habit of getting lots of exercise, then hopefully as they grow up, these things will just be a part of their lifestyle and uh, they won't have to make any drastic midlife changes when they grow up because eating healthy and exercise is just part of what they do. After you feed the baby, you should hold the baby over your shoulder and tap the back a little bit for a minute or so until you hear a little burp. Or you may hold the baby on your lap and kind of rub the back. Even if you don't hear that noise called a burp, Eventually, after a minute, you can lay the baby down and that air bubble will move up or down. When you're breastfeeding the babies, they don't really take in that much air, so you may not always hear a burp, and that's okay. And within the first two weeks, they regain their birth weight. By six months, twice their weight, by a year, three times their birth weight. So if a baby was born at six pounds, they should be about 12 pounds at the six months or 18 pounds by their first year. Most kids fall a little higher than that. And we recommend when you go to the pediatrician, you have them chart because there's a chart. And as long as the baby is going up the curve in a proper amount, there could be variables with that as long as it's consistent. You want to make sure that they eliminate pretty regularly stools and urine. It could vary from one stool a day to three stools a day. The stool may not smell that badly in the first month, 
Don't get comfortable because it's going to stink very badly later. Then urination, frequent urination. You want to make sure your baby has frequent wet diapers because that shows he's getting his fluids in and he's becoming well fed. The very first stools of, an, of a newborn is called meconium. It's the stuff that stayed in their intestinal system the nine months that the baby was growing in the womb. Of course, inside of the womb, the baby is not going to poop on its own. So this sticky, tarry, black, green stuff that we call meconium. Once that transitions out of the baby's intestinal system, and that can take about one to three days, depending on the babies, then the poop will change color. It'll start to transition, we call it. So from the dark green black to more greenish yellow, and then after the baby's being breastfed or formula fed, it'll be yellowish, um, orangish, brown. As the weeks go by, um, they tend to stool less. And then it's not uncommon for a baby to come at the two-month visit, for example, and uh, they're only pooping every other day or every two or three days. That's not uncommon. Now, um, it's not uncommon for them to do that, and as long as their stomach is nice and soft, um, is not distended, is not firm, then we know that they're fine. You know, if a baby doesn't stool, but their stomach is hard and they seem to be in pain, that could be a sign of a serious problem and they should seek medical attention.